Some people would look at this one and say that the x-intercept is 3. Okay, that's very unfortunate because it is not 3. Okay, negative 5, right? Here's the problem is some of you on the test said the x-intercept is negative 5. That is also incorrect. Okay? That's very good. The x-intercept... Well, on the test, some people said A is 3, B is 5, C is negative 15. This does not work. Okay, this shows me what A, B, and C is. I already know what A, B, and C is. I need to know how you got negative 5. This doesn't tell me how you got negative 5. Now, some of you did show, oh, well, C is negative 15 over 5, or 3, rather, is negative 5. Great. Scored it. Okay. You nailed it. If you did not show work, then I did not work, and I just marked it wrong. What? There's no need for me to work any harder than that. Okay. All right. Now that we have the x-intercept, let's get that graphed. It's negative 5, 0, which would be 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 5. Right count. So the y-intercept, some of you put as 5. Others would have put 3. Okay, forgetting about the negative, others put negative 3. Okay, all of those are incorrect because it needs to be in a coordinate pair. The y-intercept, you should have a 0 in front. Okay, again, if you didn't show work, just don't expect any credit, all right? So let's take the C value, negative 15, divide it by the B value, which is 5, which is negative 3. Bam. If negative 3 is right here. 0, negative 3. Let's draw the line. There's the graph. Listen, we could go over this, but uh, you'd just be confused in the end. All right, so I understand this is confusing. You guys are looking at words and are like, I have to read in math. Okay, and that's fine, whatever, all right? Uh, most of the problems you're going to see on the homework are going to be equations, and then you're going to have to graph them, all right? System of equations. The reason it's a system is because there's more than one equation, and so it makes a system of equations. Uh, but the vocabulary you're not going to be tested on anyway, so don't freak out about it too much. Okay, but again, if you're not knowing how to graph and stuff, then that's what you need to freak out about, all right? So, for example, y equals 4x and y equals 4x plus 2 create a system of equations. Notice the S makes it plural. There's more than one equation, all right? This graphing stuff makes solving this so easy. Okay, let, let, let's look at this example. See, if you were to graph, actually, let me, let me start. Let's say that this is our system of equations. So the first one, we have y equals negative 2x minus 3. Next one is y equals 2x plus 5. Well, first thing we need to do is create our graph. So let's do that. And our graph. This is our x-axis. This is our y-axis, which after the test, some of you do not know which one is which. If you do not know that the x-axis is horizontal and the y-axis is vertical, get yourself to math lab. Listen, I understand that math's not a huge priority. It's not something you want to do on your free time. But uh, if you want a good grade in this class, you're going to have to get to math lab. If you don't, then just keep doing what you're doing. Uh, okay, so this first one, what's my slope on this equation? Someone please tell me that they know what the slope is. Yes, Dawson. Negative 2. Okay, so it's negative 2. Let's make it a fraction, negative 2 over 1. All right. What did you say? No, what did you say? How is it negative 2? Again, if you don't know why it's negative 2 or how it is, you need to get to math lab right now. Okay? Because we've gone over this so many times. You were in my seventh grade class where we went over it so many times. Okay, and if you still don't know it, I'm telling you, right now, if I told you, it's not going to make any difference unless you get to math lab. Okay? Get to math lab, please. Do we have math lab today? No, but tomorrow we do. Uh, that's the slope. What is the y-intercept? 
Very right. good. Negative 3. Okay, so let's graph that point, negative 3. Y intercept, so on the y axis we find negative 3, which is right here. Yeah. Okay, slope is negative 2 over 1. So I can go down 2 and to the right 1. So that gives me this point. Or I can make it up 2 and to the left 1, which I'm going to have to do. Up 2 to the left 1 is right here. Up 2 to the left 1, right here. Up 2 to the left 1, and so forth, okay? Bam. There we go. That's good. All right, this is the graph of the first line, correct? So let's graph this second line. What's the slope? 2. 2. What's the y-intercept? 5. So we're going to go up to 5 and graph that first point. Now the slope is 2 over 1, but if I go up 2 and to the right 1, I'm, uh, it's not really going to help, okay? So let's make these both negative. So I can go down 2 and to the left 1, which would put me right about here. If I go down 2 and to the left 1, bam, there it is. Down 2 to the left 1, right here. Uh, there's my line, my arrows. Okay, the solution is where the two lines intersect. Who does not know what intersect means? No, seriously, what? who doesn't know what that means? It's where the two lines come together. It's where they cross. It's where they, I don't know. I don't know how else to say it, okay? So at what point do these two lines cross? Well, it was at negative 2 there, and it was up 1. As it turns out, that's all we wanted. That's the answer. Hey, let's look at this first equation. This one right here. Grapher. What is the y-intercept? Negative 1. Negative 1. So on the y-axis, I go to 0, negative 1, right here. What's the slopage? One. one. So it's either one over one or negative one over negative one. one. Negative one, rather. Okay, so if, I, if it's one over one, I can go up one and then to the right one right here. Up one to the right one, and the pattern continues like this right here. Or it can be negative one over negative one. So down one and to the left one. Down one to the left one. Down one to the left. So forth. Man. Hey, that looks pretty good. Okay? Oh, pretty good. Oh, thank you. All right, let's graph the next one. What are we looking for with the graphs? The slope. The slope. Very good. Where the lines go through each other, where they cross, where they intersect, whatever. All right, so let's look. Where's the, what's the y-intercept on this? Two. Negative two. It's negative two, which is right here. Yeah. Okay, we're going to use a slope again to find the next point. So it's 2 over 1, or it can be negative 2 over negative 1. Whichever one we need is the one that it will be. Okay, so let's use the positive 1. I'm going to go up 2 and to the right 1, which is right here. Well, I found the solution already, correct? Oh, easy. So, but I can still graph these other points. Wait, so is it just the answer is like 2 and 1 parentheses 0? Yes, the answer is a coordinate pair. That's it. Okay. So very good. The answer for this. So it's x value is one, y value is zero. Done. All right. Excellent. So Christians made this graph. You can see that these both intersect at one four. Okay. So if we were to draw the lines, which we should do. Okay. So there's our lines. That's good. That's a good point. Uh, you can see that they gra they intersect here, and so he's right. The solution is 1, 4. So Drake says, why on this red one did we start at 3? The reason is because if you look at this equation, what is oh, the y-intercept? Y okay. Yeah, once you find your first point, then use the slope to find all the other points. Done. All right, you guys, this... Maybe just looking at the equations would be fine, 
but uh, once we start having words in the problem, it's for some reason it just makes it impossible for you guys. All right. So if you struggle with word problems, particularly, please pay attention. Particularly. All right? Particularly. Cool. Uh, Gregory's Motorsports has motorcycles which have two wheels, if you didn't know, and ATVs which have four wheels, in case you didn't know, in stock. The store has a total of 45 vehicles that together have uh, 130 wheels. Okay, so in other words, if we let, we have to let y and x represent something, right? The two things that we don't know is how many motorcycles and how many ATVs. Well, you can see it let motorcycles be x and the ATVs be the Ys. This doesn't matter. If we wanted the motorcycles to be Ys and ATVs to be, to be Xs, it doesn't matter. You'll still solve and you'll still get the same, you'll still get the same uh, answer, okay? So you can see the total vehicles. Well, what type of vehicles are we talking about? Well, we've got ATVs. And motorcycles, if we combine them together, we'd have 45 vehicles. Well, how many wheels do we have? This is kind of a weird thing to consider. I don't know that many motorsports shops really think, how many wheels do we have in the shop? But this one does. All right. So they say we have 130 wheels. Well, how many wheels do motorcycles have? Two. What the heck? Well, looks like they did reverse them. Wait, that's like, why can't you do, this is like... They did, so you just switched it around? Yeah, no, it doesn't matter, actually. So let's, let's go with what we have up here. Motorcycles are X's, so this would be 2X. ATVs are our Y's. How many v wheels on an ATV? Four. Four, so it would be four Y right there. Now, when I solve this, when I graph this, it's still going to give me the same answer. Okay, and you guys may see that in here in a second. So let's uh, let's graph some graphage. On this graph, do I need negative values? No. Yes. No, I do not. Why do I not need negative values? They can't have negative wheels. You definitely can't have negative motorcycles or ATVs. Very good. So we have our x and y axis. What does the x-axis represent? The motorcycles. Very good, motorcycles. So let's label that right now as motorcycles. What did the y represent? ATBs. ATBs. All right, now we just need to figure out, uh, well, I guess I should ask, what form are these two equations in? Standard form. Very good. So I find the poster in the room. I say, what is... <laughs> I know where it is, all right? I know where it is. Thanks for pointing it out, though. Okay. Uh, I just need to find my x and y intercepts for both. I may need the slopage. Let's find out. So phantom ones. For this top one, we have a y-intercept of... 45. We have an x-intercept of? 45. 45. Very good. So let's go up to 45. We'll make these 10s. 20, 30, 40, 50. We have this point right here. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Right about here. Bam. That's my line. Let's graph this next one. So we've got 2x plus 4y equals 130. What's my x-intercept? Well, 130 divided by 2. 65. 65, very good. So we do need to go farther over 50, 60, 70. 65 is right here. And 130 divided by 4. 30, very good. 
32.5. So 32.5 would be right about here. All right. Well, this is uh, interesting because you can't really see exactly where this is that it would intersect, right? We could maybe guess. Possibly. Ah, uh, well, no, it definitely wouldn't be 20 and 20. So as it turns out, this wouldn't work anyways. So how do we find this, find this intersection? All right, so since this doesn't work, we do need some slop. So let's look at uh, the slope on this first one. All right. Well, this is in standard form, so you can look in the back there. It's the negative value of A divided by B. So for this top one, let's look at the top one first. The top one is negative 1 over 1. It's negative 1. Look, it's the negative A value divided by the B value, 1 over 1, but it's negative. Okay? So that's our sloppage. Well, what about uh, this next one? Well, we've got the negative A, so it's negative 2. A over 4, which is B. It's just negative 1 half. Okay. Now that we have these slopages, uh, it'll be a little bit more difficult to find the, the solution to this. But it can be done. All right. All right. Listen, you guys are going to have to use uh, some form of uh, guessing on trying to solve this, okay? Because notice our scale here is in tens. Okay, we don't know exactly where this intersects. Okay, it looks like it might be right in the middle here. So let's 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 check. Let's see if uh, let's use the slope on this red one. So if we go down ten, we'll go to the right ten, which would be right here. If I go down ten and to the right ten, I should be right about here. If I go down another 10 and to the right 10, I'd be right here. Okay? Well, let's use... Oh, so notice on that one, all I did is I made this slope a negative 10 over positive 10. That still is going to give you negative 1, right? Let's look at the next one. So it's negative 1 half. Uh, let's make these by 10s, though, okay? So negative 10 over 20. So if I start on this purple one, I'll go down 10. So uh, 22.5. And to the right 10, will be right here. I'm going to go down. Oops. Wait. I, uh, actually, yeah, it should be right there. Line's a little bad. Go down 10 and to the right 10. A 20, rather, yeah, so it would be right here. That's good. That's very good. So they're close. And if we go down another 10, it would be 12 and a half. And it would be over a 40. So we can see, see how these two points, one's above and one's below? So we know it has to be to the right of these because they're going down, both of them. And if we look over here to the right, these are to the right of each other, so it's got to be to the left of 30, okay? Uh, well, that's okay. No, there's a solution. It's just going to be a fraction. And as it turns out, that's okay in this situation. I'm going to teach you guys better ways to solve this one, so let's skip this one because it's going to take a long time. As it turns out in this one, we just needed the system anyways. So, But you could graph them. For C, this one's giving you the graph, which is very convenient. Uh, but well, first, we need, first we need to write the system. So uh, give scrapbooking lessons for $15 an hour plus $10 supply charge, okay? So lessons equals $15 per hour. <coughs> plus the $10 supply charge, 
All right, so there's one of the equations. The second equation, uh, Scrapbooks Incorporated, this is a different company. They give it at $20 per hour, so Y equals 20X with no additional charge, so plus zero. All right. Well, now we can graph these, uh, 15X plus 10. So we're going to start at 10. Our slope here is 15 over 1. So, yeah, let's go up 15. So that'd be 25 and 1, 2 and 40. Well, we started at 10 there. So we go up 15 is 25 to the right one and so forth. All right, so that's for creative crafts. Let's look at Scrapbooks Incorporated. So this one has a y-intercept of 0. And then it goes up 20 to the right one. So that's just below. Up 20 to the right one. You can see it intersects there. And it just goes up from there. OK. So write and solve the system. We've solved it. What's the solution to this one? Back, that's backwards. Well, 2, 40. 240. All right, so it may ask for an interpretation of this, and you will need to interpret. In other words, they cost the same, because that's where they intersect, right here, at two hours for $40. All right. <laughs> Let me show you guys how you can tell. Let me show you guys how you can tell if... If there's no, well, actually, if, let's start with one solution, okay? If, uh, if, if an equation is in slope-intercept form, can you guys find the slope? Yeah. What if it's in point-slope form? Can you find the slope? Yeah. What if it's in standard form? Can you find the slope? Yeah. yeah. If you look at the poster, you can, I would hope. Okay? All right. If you can find the slope, that's all you've got to worry about as far as this question goes. If there's one solution, no solutions, or infinite solutions. One solution. Here's the thing is, if there's one solution, if slopes are not... We'll get to the last part here in a second. No, 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 no. <laughs> there's no solution if... Slopes are the, we'll get there, infinite solutions is if slopages are the, we'll get there. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> No, I need the tension to build. It's like a, you know, like a story where the climax is and then the heroes have to beat everyone up. There will be one solution if slopes are not equal. It doesn't matter how much they vary by. If it's by a tenth, a hundredth, it could be by one billionth. Eventually they will absolutely positively intersect. Okay? There would only be one solution. There's no solution if the slopes are the same and there's another something else has to happen if there's no solution if the slopes are the same and y intercepts are not equal there's infinite solutions if the slopes are the same but now, the y-intercepts, they are equal. So if this is our graph, let's look at uh, two lines, okay? If they do not have the same slope, what you'll end up with is, you'll have this line right here like this. You'll have this one like this right here. All right, and you can see that they intersect at one point, okay? That's why there can never be two uh, solutions to this is because they're straight. They'll never come back and touch each other ever again. Okay? 
That's what's nice about this, okay, is lines that intersect, they have so much in common. Well, they have very little in common, and they come together only once. So that's kind of good, right? Well, let's take uh, two lines that uh, have no solutions, all right? So let's, let's look at this line right here. And this one right here. Can you guys see kind of how they have the same slope? Maybe. This line and this line. Okay. This is a very sad situation, parallel lines. Because they have so much in common, but they never come together. Right? No, it's just math. It's life. Okay? Let me... Let me <laughs> do you guys see how they... These two lines have the same slope, but they don't have the same y-intercept. Does that make sense? This one intercepts right here. This one intercepts right here. How does right there? No, the, I'm talking about the y-intercepts. Just the y-intercepts. No, just look at the green lines there, okay? Do the green lines, the no. green lines ever touch? No. No, what kind of lines do we call those? Parallel. Parallel. Oh. They will never touch. Okay, let's look at another example up in here. Let's say that uh, we're looking at, I don't know, let's look at this line. Okay, this line, what, uh, what is the y-intercept of this line? It looks like it's zero, right? So let's say it's zero. If, if another line has the same y-intercept and it has the same slope, does that make sense that they're the same line? See that now you have, you have two lines that are sitting on top of each other. The slopes are the same. The y-intercept is the same as well. So does that make sense that there's infinite solutions? Yeah, not really. Uh, at least if you're paying attention, it does. All right, if we look at this system, you've got 2x plus 1, and then you've got 2x minus 3. What is the slope in this first one? 2x plus 1. Wait, what? <laughs> what is the slope? No, it's just 2. 2. Right? Slope is 2. What about this second one? What's the slope on this? 2. two. two. So how many solutions are there? Two. It depends. Well, what's the y-intercept on this top one? 1. What's the y-intercept on the second one? Three. Negative three. So how many solutions are there? None. The slopes are the same. The y-intercepts are different. No solutions. They're parallel lines. Uh, D, let's start with this first equation here. y equals 2 thirds x plus 3. Let's start with the y-intercept, which is at 3. Right, yeah. And my slopage on this is 2 over 3, which is the same as negative 2 over negative 3. So let's, uh, let's go up 2 and to the right 3. So let's up 2 and to the right 3 right here. Up 2 and to the right 3. That's 6. Up 2 and to the right 3. Let me right here. Okay, well, let's go the other way. So down two and to the left three, right here, and so forth. Um, two and to the left three, and down two and to the left three, right here. Two to the left three, yeah, right here. 
All right, so now that we have all these points, let's graph the second one. Well, there's a problem with this one. Notice how there's a coefficient of y? Yeah, we can't really have that, okay? So let's get rid of it by dividing everywhere by 3. Well, we have a slope of 2 thirds. What's my y-intercept? 15 divided by 3, which is 5. five. So that's right here. What do you guys notice about the slopes? They are the same. This one's 2 thirds. This one's 2 thirds. How many solutions will there be? None. Are the y-intercepts the same? No, they are not the same. So these two lines will never touch. They're parallel. Stinking line. All right, so this one we would say there's no solution. All right, let's look at this next one, E. So let's find this. Let's find the slope of E. Let's look at this first one. What's my sloppage? Well, it's negative A over B. A is negative 1, so negative 1 over this 1. I have two negatives, so my slope is just 1. Okay. Uh, let's look at this next one. We could rewrite this equation as y equals x plus 1. Okay, and we don't need the rest of this stuff. All I did was I combined that positive 2, negative 2 rather, with this positive 3. So, what's my slope for this? Slope is 1. It's a phantom 1. All right, what do you guys notice about the slopes? They're the same. Now we need to figure out, we need to figure out what the y-intercepts are first. Okay? So what's the y-intercept on E? Well, you're just going to take the C value and divide it by the B value, 1 over 1 y-intercept. What's the y-intercept for the second one? Two. It's one. What? Okay. Now that we know that the slopes are the same and the y-intercepts are the same, how many solutions are there? Infinite solutions. Done.